she I, I was introduced to her on the last Critters album because Dan Armstrong produced the last Critters album. And he just brought her by one day. He says, oh, here's my girlfriend. And I recognized her because I had seen her with Elephant's Memory at the scene. Steve, you know, eventually I left the guitar store and she left Dan. And she contacted me about six months after that happened, said, hey, I got an album deal. Do you want to play on my record? And I said, hell yeah. So we were playing at the Troubadour and somebody knocked on our dressing room door. And I opened the door and there's this dweeby looking guy, big glasses and, you know, one of those flammable rayon shirts with a collar about six inches high. And he says, I like to see Carly. And I said, well, we're about to go on, you know, maybe after the show. I said, I'd like to see Carly. I said, dude, later. And I slammed the door in his face. So I, I turn around and Carly's sitting over there with uh, on a sofa with a guitar. And she's looking at me with this very wide eyed, you know, deer in the headlights stare. And I go, what? She says, <laughs> you have any idea who that was? And I go, uh, no. She says, it was Warren Beatty. I went, oh, shit. Oh, no. Let me go get him. I'm so sorry. She said, no, 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 don't. She said, he needs that. She said, I don't think anyone has ever done that to him. And that was freaking wonderful. Leave it. <laughs> I said, okay. Yeah. You got it. And I, I swear that that's where your so vain came from. And I sent that story. I said, am I right about the, the Warren Beatty story? She said, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, called Liberty on top. And the title is Life, Billy, and the Pursuit of Happiness. Wow. And and believe it or not, Billy Joel wrote the forward on it. We were just, in the beginning, you know, I had a band called Topper. It was myself, Russell Javers, Doug Stegmeyer, and uh, Howard Emerson, right? And uh, that band eventually became the Billy Joel Band with the inclusion of Richie Cannata. And um, so we, we were friends before we were musicians together. Everybody says, did you know The Stranger was going to be a smash hit? No, you don't know that. You, got, you guys were a name, a name on Long Island that, that I always heard and, and knew about the band. Everybody knew. Bands like your band, Rat Race Choir, uh, uh, The Good Rats, uh, Twisted Sister, all that, that kind of thing. Those were with other people like myself are listening to and going like, okay, that was a great idea. We're gonna, we're gonna use that idea. <laughs> that song just, it, it rocks, it it's so, it rocks so hard. I remember it, was that the summer that it came out in 99? No, it actually came out probably a year before. Um, and it's a funny thing that record, it's, it's it's one it's one of those situations where a record took a while for it to really catch on, because what what's amazing is that at the time when we made that stuff, the big stuff on the radio was the Backstreet Boys, In Sync, Britney Spears. Uh -huh. So so it was like a sea change when we came along, you know, and that was a major that was a major that was a major. So yeah, it, when it first came out, it was like radio stations were like, we're not sure about this. And record stores were even like, I don't know about this, but the kids were like, this is awesome. They were digging it. But the people, the gatekeepers, so to speak, you know, the people who decide if it even gets heard or not, yeah. um, were, were, were very um, resistant because it was not, it wasn't what they were used to getting. You know? I played in a couple of different bands with a couple sets of musicians, eventually ending up in, in Wild Cherry. Um, which, and we were sort of a, you know, A-list a regional club band. By that point, I had been in four or five bands, I've been playing, you know, five or six years. And uh, we were a rock band. And, uh, and the song is very autobiographical, exactly what happened. You know, we were playing Zeppelin, you know, Foghead, ZZ Top, you know, all, you know, all rock stuff, Robin Trower. And someone actually came up to our drummer and said, you better start playing some funky music, white boy, you know, because we'd start. <laughs> You know, everybody's dancing, of course, Casey's, you know, coming out and the Bee Gees and, you know, even, you know, Bowie and Commodores and all those songs were on through the hits then. And so we really made a concerted effort to go in that direction and wrote some songs in that with that feel basically inspired by the Commodores and play that funky music was one of them.
How you been? It's uh, us. I did. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> or as a joke, I don't think we've talked in the 21st century, and right. I think the last time I reached out to you, and we're going to, uh, the last time we sort of bumped into each other was when Chrissy uh, right. passed. Chris was the drummer in the, in the cover band I was in. Uh, that I joined when I was 17 and um, you know I had the, I had the facility you know I had the, the raw talent and um, and he said uh, I'm gonna take you to see a band <laughs> and he took me we went to uh, uh, speaks to see rat race huh. and that was like uh, that was uh, like you know, boot camp. <laughs> you know, obviously Mark was a huge, huge influence. I had seen, I had seen a lot of pro bands. You know, I, I'd seen Emerson, like Palmer, and Yes, and Genesis, and all this stuff. But n none of the bands I ever saw were even close to capturing any of that that big rock experience. You know, we'll say. And your band was the first that was like. A, 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 a truly you, you guys put on concerts that it was a it was a concert experience and to see mark he was you know a lot of guitar players now you know uh l like like i had you know they have the dexterity and they have the knowledge and they have all this but he was such a physical player and attack and all of you guys were you guys attacked the music in a way that was you sold it and i and i was just like it, it, it was, you know, it opened my eyes to, to, to what being a musician was about, you know.